So now we are going to go live into the system. We start off here with our virtual time clock. Um, you can see here on the left. Right now our employee is clocked in. Therefore, all of the other fields were grayed out because this system is intelligent and it knows that the only possibilities now that the employee is clocked in is to start a break or to end work. I'll say a little bit more about this screen before I clock him out um, so that you can see how the system updates live. First here on this part of the um, screen, you will see the timestamps, when the person arrived, all of the breaks they took in the exact time. Underneath this would be the weekly uh, overview for each week and how many hours were worked, as well as the next screen will give you a daily uh, summary for each day of the week, including the hours worked as well as the breaks and if applicable, the mandatory breaks as well. Now down here you see a visual representation of the hours worked. So you would have by each day the time worked as well as the breaks highlighted here in orange. Of course, this is how we have set up the screen for you default out of the box, but you could change this as you prefer depending on what data is important to you. So if your employee comes to the computer at work, uh, they will see this. If they use this at home, it will look the same as well as uh, in Teams, uh, anywhere they clock in, even from their mobile device. As you can see, we are in the browser right now, but it would look exactly the same. As Michael mentioned, you can also use a classic analog timestamp clock in a token. Um, so you could clock in on your time clock and then clock out here and vice versa. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on end work so you see what happens next. I click on end work and you will see that two items are updated right away. The system um, clocks out the worker right now and it will add a new timestamp here, which will be the next line as well as you will see a graph coming up here, down here in blue, uh, counting the hours visually of the employee. As you can see, I didn't have to even refresh the page and you can now see they have been at work for an hour and a half as well as the timestamp right here. This is what it would look like when before you clock in. So again, the system is intelligent, so it knows that the person has clocked out. There's only four options, starting work, starting remote work, starting offsite work or starting to travel. The next thing I'd like to show you is the supervisor dashboard. So it will look a little bit different for the supervisor than the employee. So I'm going to just switch the tab up here. I have prepared this. And as you can see, there's some data in here. Now I'm just going to go ahead and refresh this because we have just added this new timestamp 1114, which is the local time here in Central Europe. So you can see that a supervisor would have an account of all the active attendance right here on the dashboard. This is again the default dashboard we have put here out of the box, but of course you can change to uh, whichever you prefer. Now, if you have a lot of employees and this list goes on and on, you know, you, it's kind of hard to keep track of them because sometimes people forget to clock out. Because of this, we have added an additional screen over here on the right. It is called active attendance with correction required. So instead of scrolling through all of your employees, the system recognizes and takes your attention to some items that might require your attention. So you can see that right here, it's put right in front of you. You don't have to go searching through a long list and you can take care of it right there. We've also put some three more items down here. One of them is the leave requests that are pending, as well as the leave summary for your team and the sick leaves. 
you can see as I'm hovering over these items that uh, this, this little pop up comes here and everything is highlighted in these, these different colors. So we've used a bar chart here, but you could also display this in any other way that you prefer and you can also um, drill down on this. So this is what the supervisor dashboard and time of attendance, time and attendance would look like. When we come back here to the virtual time clock dashboard that has the virtual time clock and these items that are already explained, um, you come over here on the left and you can see that this, this module is pretty extensive. We'll only be looking at a couple of things today. So first we have our daily summaries here, which is one day. There's even a little one right here. And there's a little seven right here because the timesheets are weekly summaries. And then you have your time summaries, which are for the calendar months. I'm going to go ahead and open this up so we can have a closer look at this. So for each month, you have one line. And you see up here that you can immediately export this data to Excel. You can also, if you already have some data you would like to import in the system and work with in the system, you can also go ahead and import your data from Excel, all of your hours that are previously recorded. You can also have uh, Excel templates that you can make yourself or use some of the default templates to work with your data just as you need it. Um, this can be used for to send your hours directly to payroll preparation. I'm going to go ahead and open up this first line just to show you what you would see in um, the summary, in the time summary right here. So here you can see, first of all, um, you see here the employee's name highlighted in blue because this is actually hyperlinked. The whole system is connected, so you can always jump from one thing to another. This will have your start and end date, the months and the year. On the right side, you will see allocated hours, attended hours, approved hours, working hours and overtime. So everything is right here and this could be exported uh, even as a PDF or like I said into Excel uh, directly to other programs as well for your payroll preparation. I'm just going to go ahead and close this one up as well as the supervisor dashboard taking us back to the um, virtual time clock and now I know you are waiting for me to show you um, what this looks like in Teams so I will bring the screen that I have prepared right over here. Um, I'm using this right now in the uh, browser. So this is uh, Teams, Microsoft.com. If you're using it in the app, that works just as well. But if you happen to be off site, maybe you are in a hotel and you have internet access, but they do not have the Teams app installed, you can also use your credentials and just simply log into any browser that you like as well as your mobile phone. So over here on the left, um, you see this is our solution and this is what it would look like in Teams. So you can see that it looks exactly the same. You jump straight from your chat right there. You got your chat, you got your meetings right here, everything that you're using day to day business and you don't have to leave the app. You don't have to keep switching apps and losing distract, uh, being distracted. You can just go right in here and you will find everything looking ex and functioning exactly the same as in our app. So I'm just going to go ahead and make this a little bigger so you can see it better and we'll show you right now um, how to put a leave request, for example, from uh, directly from Teams. So I'm just going to click on leave request right here. That's just going to open that up. As you can see, the, the, the same thing, everything can uh, export to Excel. 
You can also, this is a, the Power BI, you can always visualize this view. Um, if you want to use the analytics tool in uh, Microsoft Teams, especially this is great for managers. Now up here, you see the little new thing. So I'll just click on that. If you are using Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Platform, this might uh, look familiar to you already because you have the standard look and feel of your app that you are used to, including this business process bar right here. Now, the first item, we're in the enter leaf stage right now. The first item is going to be putting in the type of leaf. Depending on what type of leaves you give your employees, you can, of course, set this up just to your needs. Um, it could be vacation. It could be any anything you like, really. The solution is completely customizable. We'll put in a, a request here. Let's do it for March 1st of this year. We'll just do one day. Um, you could make it a half a day right here by just sliding this over. Um, but just to keep it simple, let's just do one day. Um, you could make a comment right here. And then you just go ahead and save it as a draft. Once you've done this, you will see that this whole screen uh, changes and it will give you some additional information that you might need in planning your pay time off. Down here, you're going to see um, how many days. Once it loads, um, you're going to see how many days of vacation you have remaining this year, as well as last year, if you have this carrying over. And now um, we can go ahead and make sure that everything is correct. This is the day that the employee wants off. And as soon as you have verified that this looks good, you can also see the absence calendar here on the right. As soon as you have submitted it, um, put it into drafts. This is the day we are trying to request off. We can see the other people here on the team. Uh, we see that usually people have Saturdays and Sundays off. We also see these people have some other schedules, but we cannot see for privacy reasons if they're on vacation or maybe they're having a sick day. We don't know. We just see our own day. So we're going to submit this. There we go. And now it's just going to be saving. And you can always see with these business process flows, which I think is pretty neat. You can see like this one is active for one minute. So later when we look at the supervisor view, he will he or she will also know like how long this has been kind of sitting there. And we also see that this has now moved over to the approval stage. So this is when the supervisor needs to start becoming active. We got the supervisor right here. We're also using the teams. Um, so they can do this from anywhere. We will have to um, refresh this. And we'll sort it from new to. We will resort this right here, the newer ones, because I put it in for March 1st, 2023. Um, there it is. OK, just showed up. OK, so here we go. The supervisor would just go in. Click on the new leave request would also see that in their dashboard, of course. So you never miss anything because the system just lets you know when there's time to pay attention to something uh, that you need to become active. All right, and the supervisor sees as a similar view. The absence calendar, he can check, he or she can check um, who else is here, if this is feasible to take a day off on that day, um, which days, how many vacation days are left down here, and we are in the approval stage, so we can just go ahead and make a decision right here. We'll just go ahead and give Paul the day off, click Submit. And just like that, Paul was granted um, a day off vacation from his a lot of time directly in Teams. So if I went back to the app, it's of course automatically updated in there because it just goes across 
all of the systems. So it's going to be in the mobile app, if you open it in the app, whichever browser, as well as Teams. There you go, it's refreshing right now, so it's going to deduct that day. And just like that, we are done. And it also says approved right here. So this will end the live part of our presentation. And I believe we have a couple of questions. But first, I want to take a couple more minutes of your time to tell you about some of the time and attendance module highlights. First of all, we have a complete solution for time and attendance, including uh, counting the absence and vacation days, which we have included for you. Um, it has integrated time control functions. You can um, put in uh, you can you can put in the requirements, how many uh, hours, allocated hours for each employee. We have time account and overtime hours, so you can keep track. You can have, um, it's like a bank account, but it's with uh, hours instead of money. So you can count the minutes, you could count by hours, and you can set that up exactly yourself as well as thresholds, um, just as you need it to work. You also, as I showed you, the supervisor dashboard, it has current employee attendance and it's a real time dashboard. So as soon as somebody clocks in or out, this will update and you can always exactly see who is on the office, who is on break, who is on site, um, just in one uh, overview dashboard. You have the daily, weekly, monthly and annual overviews, which all of them you can export it to Excel. You can work with your data there. You can run analytics on there. Uh, you could use Power BI. You can transfer directly your times and hours to your payroll software uh, or to your accountant. You have the option to automatically book out uh, including information, sending the information to supervisors. So when there is a, uh, that's what I was talking about earlier. Like if there's a, a correction required or if there's a compliance issue, like for example, I am in Germany. I'm only allowed to work uh, 10 hours a day in my region. And I do have to admit, I do sometimes forget to clock out at night. But the system, after 10 hours, it will just automatically clock me out and it will let my supervisor know that there's a correction required.